31-year-old man who admitted to killing victims in his apartment, then dismembering their bodies, may have murdered up to 17 people. A serial killer is on the loose in the Daytona area. Investigators are on the trail of a possible serial killer. A stunning claim from an accused killer awaiting trial in Pennsylvania. And authorities believe they could very well have a serial killer in custody. And they say it may be the work of a serial killer. An accused serial killer in Welcome to 5 Minutes of Murder, the segment where I, Daddy Longlegs, fill you in on one of today's real-life monsters, that of the serial killer. On this episode, we're going to get a closer look at Henry Lee Lucas, a.k.a. the confessional killer, a.k.a. the highway stalker. Henry Lee Lucas is a, is a cold-blooded killer. His motivation was uh, sex with dead women. He killed because he just liked to kill, and he liked to have sex with dead people. Lucas is a serial killer. Uh, he traveled all over the United States, and that was his mainly M.O., and that's the reason he lasted so long, because he never stayed in one spot. He killed and moved, killed and moved. I would say anywhere from 50 to 75 people uh, Henry probably killed in his uh, travels. Henry Lee Lucas was an American serial killer, rapist, and pedophile. He was also a necrophiliac who was convicted of murdering at least 11 people despite claiming to have to, uh, been involved or have killed up to 300 people. Henry Lee was born August 23rd, 1936 in Blacksburg, Virginia. Henry Lee came from an abusive family which cost him his left eye at the age of six due to a fight he had with his brother that got infected and his mother ignored. To say that he was from an abusive environment, well, that would be an understatement. Henry, you know, goes way back to, to an abusive family, uh, abusive mother, abusive uh, father. His father was crippled. Uh, Henry really never had a chance in life. Henry would be either locked in the closet or put out of the house so his mother could do her job. And this is the, one of the main things that Henry disliked about his mother, the way she treated the father and the way she treated him and bringing the clients home to the house. And as that wasn't bad enough... My mother was a prostitute. Uh, my dad was a... Uh person with uh, no legs. Uh, he got run over by a freight train. And they made bootleg and it's mostly what I did. You know? I just uh, didn't like her because of what she made me do. And she made me watch her have sex with people, you know. And, uh, I was beat constantly every day. And went on for years. Henry's mother made him dress up in female clothes. Made him uh, watch her have sex with other uh, men, sometimes even when uh, the Henry's daddy was present. Uh, I think that he, she didn't allow him to have any relationships outside of the uh, house and probably even outside of just her and him. At the age of 13, Henry Lee's father, Anderson, died of hypothermia after coming home drunk one night and collapsing right outside the door during a blizzard. Things continued to get more depraved as his mother, Viola, would teach him how to have sex with dead animals. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, dead animals. He told me about some of his childhood days of killing animals and having sex with them, and, and he's told me a couple of times that a dead animal is better than a live woman to have sex with. He was uh, taught how to have sex with dead animals at the early age, how to have sex with, with live people, and then really kidded about it and laughed about it, laughed at about it, and uh, it really just turned Henry in the wrong direction. Shortly thereafter, while in the sixth grade, Henry Lee dropped out and ran away. Basically, he ran away and became a drifter around Virginia, doing small crimes, breaking and entering and stuff like that. This led to his first arrest. He was soon released, and then at the age of 15, Henry Lee claimed to have murdered his first victim in 1951, when he strangled a then 17-year-old Laura Burnsley, who refused his sexual advances. In 1954, Henry Lee was arrested yet again, and later convicted of a dozen counts of burglary in the area, which he was sentenced to four years in prison. Then on January 11th, 1960, just after Christmas, Henry Lee was released, and he went back home to visit his mom in Blackbird, Virginia. An argument ensued, and basically she wanted him to move back home to take care of her. He claimed she hit her with a broomstick. Either way, he stabbed her in the neck and left her for dead. I think in 1960, Henry uh, got in a fight with his mother, uh, and wound up stabbing her in the neck with a knife and then uh, fleeing and was later apprehended for and convicted for her, her murder. I killed my mother. I remember hitting her, you know, and uh, I left. I never went back. 
and she fell. I'm, I remember her fall. But she was not dead, in fact. She did die shortly after from a heart attack, basically from the assault, but she did not die from the stabbing. Henry Lee was soon arrested and put in jail in the lovely state of Michigan. Henry Lee claimed to have killed his mother in self-defense, but his claims, well, basically they were rejected. And he was sentenced to 40 years imprisonment for second-degree murder. Then, after only serving 10 years in prison, Henry Lee was released in June 1970 due to prison overcrowding. Now, fast forward to 1975, where we find a now rehabilitated Henry Lee Lucas get himself married to a woman named Betty Crawford. Betty had two very lovely daughters from a previous marriage, and boy, did this go south fast. Henry Lucas told me that he got married uh, in 1975 to Betty Crawford. Uh, she had two daughters at the time. One of them was nine, one of them was six. Uh, he started having sex with, with both of them, the nine-year-old and the six-year-old. He eventually was caught with a nine-year-old, and he told me that his wife just flat stated that he was either going to have to quit or they were not going to be able to live together. Well, he got caught again, and evidently she did run him off at that time. Once he was run off by his now ex-wife, Henry Lee headed south, and eventually ended up in Jacksonville, Florida. Where else would I do it again? That is where he would soon meet his new partner, sometimes lover, and his best friend, Honest Tool. Now this is where the real American nightmare would start. Henry took a stolen car down and left it in Florida, uh, and was later picked up by Otis Tool in a uh, beer joint in Jacksonville, Florida. Now I understand that they became lovers in, in the homosexual sense after that, during, during some time in that first uh, meeting. Uh, I think that there's a possibility that both of them were uh, bisexual. I've took out his tool out and got picked up men, you know, so he could have sex with them. Tool was the one that was um, almost completely gay. Uh, Henry would have sex with, with Tool on certain occasions, but uh, Tool would really get mad whenever they would capture a female, uh, take her somewhere and, and kill her, and then if Henry had sex with this female, which in almost all instances Henry did after she was dead, then Tool would get very mad and uh, mutilate the body, cut it up, uh, beat on it, uh, hit it with rocks, uh, just just really take out his anger on the body. Otis was a sick person. Uh, he's homosexual. Uh, I'm not saying all homosexuals are sick, you know, but he was mentally sick. Now it was 1977 where Henry Lee and Otis basically started their killing spree that spanned basically all of the lower 48 states. The main reason Henry and Toole both escaped justice is because they never stayed in one place after committing the murder. They left. They were immediately gone. They threw the body out or left the body somewhere where it would take a while to be found. And they were several states away with no real evidence there to connect them with uh, having ever known this person or being a part of this person's life. Henry Lucas and, and Toole are very dangerous. As far as serial killers go, they are the, one of the most dangerous uh, murderers th that you'll ever find because they're hooked on it. It's like a heroin addict. They have to have their fix, and uh, so they have to kill to enjoy life. Never seeing eye to eye all the time. Sometimes Henry Lee and Otis would basically have an argument. Then they had this one very big argument that basically made Otis return back to Florida. He left his niece, Becky Powell, to live with Henry Lee at the time. Otis Toole had a, had a niece named uh, Frida Powell. I think she went by Becky most of the time whenever they were around. And uh, Henry really liked Becky a lot, but uh, I don't think he ever fell in love with her. He started uh, having sex with Becky when she was about nine years old. He told me in an interview that he was not the first one to have sex with Becky and that she initiated it sometimes at that age. Yeah, but when Henry's lips are moving, sometimes he's lying. But, but I do believe he was having sex with Becky for a long, long time. I took her when she was nine years old, and I raised her up until she was 16 years old. I paid for her food, I paid for her clothes, I did everything. Now fast forward to around 1982, where Henry Lee and Becky Powell basically headed west, ended up in a place called Ringgold, Texas where they found work as hired hands on this ranch that was basically overgrown for an 82-year-old woman by the name of Kate Rich. The employment was shortly lived as Rich's family grew suspicious of the couple and accused them of cashing bad checks on, on, on the name. Henry Lee and Becky continued to move around the area, but then basically soon headed back to uh, the Florida area. Now, as they were traveling back to Florida, that trip, well, that took a very, very grim turn as well. Hitchhiked back to Florida. 
They got a ride from the church to a uh, truck stop up in Wise County out of Alboy. Uh, then they got a ride to Decatur, and then from Decatur they got a ride to Denton. So they were let out just uh, at the uh, US 380 and Interstate 35 in Denton. And they was unable to get a ride, it was so late. Uh, they wound up camping in a little area that was a uh, southwest part of the intersection there. A little big grassy area and a little, little grove of trees. And then behind that was a railroad truck. Uh, I think they were sitting there on a pallet. They had been arguing for several days and during this whole trip about going back to Florida. Becky was homesick. Henry had some traffic warrants or something there. He just kept telling her that if he went back, he'd get put in jail. And he just did not want to go back. I think that in their argument that night on their little, at their little camp area, uh, Becky slapped him, and Henry, in his words, said, I always keep a knife handy, and I just stuck a knife at her chest. Uh, said she just slumped over and died, he thinks, immediately. And I think his terminology was, me and Becky talked about it, and we decided that it was best to cut her up in little pieces and destroy the body. But before he did that, he had sex with her, he said. Soon after murdering the love of his life, Becky Powell, Henry Lee returned to Ringhold, Texas to tie up some loose ends. I've always had a theory that Kate Rich knew that Henry Lucas had already murdered Becky Powell and that she had confronted him with that. What he did on Kate Rich was the night that, that we had witnesses saying that he said he was going to go over and see Kate. He said he had no intentions of killing her that night. Uh, he really was going to get her and go to church. Uh, he went by and picked her up, but instead of going to church, they rode across the river. He got some beer, got her a Coke over in Oklahoma. And then he was driving uh, back toward Ringgold on high, Highway 81 to take her home uh, and decided that, uh, that he was going to kill her and drove... Uh, south of Ringgold on Highway 81, drove across the railroad tracks and stopped uh, in a position where his car couldn't be seen from the road. And he pulled off across a, a little rail track that runs parallel with the, the highway there, uh, grabbed his knife, stuck it in her, reached across her, tried to open the door and tried to push her out, but she was so big he had to get out and go around and help her out. Drug her down a little embankment and uh, undressed her and had sex with her. After he said that he had engaged in sex with her dead body. He said he used a piece of pipe and a piece of wood and stuffed her body into a metal culvert that runs under the road on the west side of those railroad tracks. It didn't take long for law enforcement to put two and two together in the case of Kate Rich's murder. Then on July 11th, 1983, Henry Lee Lucas was arrested in Monte County, Texas. Once in police custody, Henry Lee confessed to everything. The first time in his life, Henry was getting some kind of people paying attention to it. He began to uh, like this attention. They called and said that Henry had confessed to a murder in this county. And Henry showed us where he had uh, left most of the body of Becky. I saw the initial bones and knew that they had a confession, knew they had a body. This newfound attention, like none of Henry's ever showed Henry, was very profound. It was like a drug and had a very weird effect on him. One day, Henry just wrote a note and said he wanted to confess. And once he got that attention for confessing to that murder, then he began to confess to a lot of murders that he had done and uh, a lot of murders that he didn't do. And the real problem with Henry was trying to figure out which ones he did and which ones he was just trying to take. Now, while all this was going on, Henry Lee Lucas's cases in Monte County and Denton County found him both guilty on the cases of Kate Rich and the cases of Becky Powell, both for murder. But that did not stop Henry Lee's next massive confessional. He would confess for the past 10 years of his nefarious actions all over the country. This is a confession that uh, he, unsolicited confession that he wrote in his cell and passed out uh, for us to go talk to him. Uh, and it says, I, Henry Lucas, to try and clear this matter up, I killed Kate Rich on September last year. I have tried to get help for so long and no one will believe me. I have killed for the past 10 years and no one will believe me. I tried to get help every way I know how and no one will believe me. With that and a few unreleased key facts that he relinquished, 
about some of the cold cases, basically a federal task force was formed to figure out what was going on here. The task force was formed in the latter part of November 1983, and the purpose of it was to coordinate uh, the interviews from the different law enforcement officers uh, that had a legitimate uh, need to interview him. There was literally thousands of law enforcement officers because he did stand up in open court and say that he had killed hundreds of people. Once he said that and, been, and began confessing to these, then from all over the United States, people began to come with murders that fit his M.O. People had been found on the side of the road, people had been dismembered, uh, young women, old women, anything that especially had a dismemberment to it. From that moment on, law enforcement agencies from all over the United States started to gather together and piece together parts of their cold cases based on Harry Lee Lucas's confessionals. Some of the stuff he was saying was true, some of the stuff was suspect, but there was more information than he would have uh, if he were not involved in the first place. Lucas has been convicted of 11 homicides. He is formally charged with 20 to 25 more. Of the approximately 1,000 officers that came and interviewed Lucas, you cannot get an accurate number. However, at different levels of certainty, some of them very certain, some of them reasonably certain, but at different levels of certainty, the officers that interviewed him believe he's responsible for somewhere over 100 different homicides. And I keep giving him confessions here up until 1985. I give him confessions. Now, at the end of the day, Henry Lee Lucas was sentenced to death by lethal injection. We, the jury, found the defendant, Henry Lee Lucas, guilty of the offense of murder as alleged in the indictment. But that day would never come. On March 12, 2001, at 11 p.m., Henry Lee Lucas was found dead in prison from a heart failure at the age of 64. His body was buried at Captain Joe Bride Cemetery in Huntsville, Texas. His grave stayed unmarked due to the threat of the headstone theft by what could only be classified as Henry Lee Lucas groupies until someone anonymously and strangely and correct identified his grave and marked it. Some sort of inside information, methinks. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared of dying. Dying is only a death step away from he uh, heaven. You know what I'm saying? And no matter where you go, you're going to die, I'm going to die, somebody else is going to die. You know, that's a death sentence everybody's got. So there you have it, kids. Henry Lee Lucas, a rapist, a pedophile, a necrophiliac, a murderer, and although he was only convicted of 11 murders, he was suspect in over 300 possible cold case homicides. To this, to him, I say, Good riddance. So that's it for us on this episode of Five Minutes of Murder. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, you know, remember to lock your doors and your windows because you never know when your five minutes will be up. Peace.